Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Dungeon Fog once again. And you'll notice that I've done a little bit more homework on our little tutorial map that I've been working on through these series of videos. And what I'd like to focus on today is a continuation of the previous video that we've done on basic asset placement and editing. And we're going to take it a little bit deeper this time by focusing on some of the more advanced tools and tricks that you can do with editing. So the first thing I would like to draw your attention to is if we bring up our assets under the Place Props menu, one of the first things I want to show you that we didn't discuss in the previous video is how you can actually arrange all of your props. So the default will set to this tab menu as you can see here with all of your different themes and categories and you can then expand and collapse these categories as needed. What I would like to draw your attention to is this little area here, this little button. And what this will actually do is if you click it, it actually brings up all of your assets, but it brings up the images specifically. You can then hover over the image to get exactly what kind of asset it is. So in this case, I'm hovering over the rope and hook asset. And so this way, if you're looking for a particular image, as opposed to starting to search through it using your search bar, you can actually just open up all the prop images and scan through them until you find what you're looking for. But if you ever click off of it and then go back to your assets, it will default back to this setup. So what we're going to be focusing on today is a number of things. The first thing I want to draw your attention to is when you actually click on an asset specifically, is this little area down here, the colorization menu. Now this works one of two ways. As you can see, I've already changed some of the coloring here, and as I slide my hue slider down, the asset will begin to change colors ever so slightly. You can also come over here and actually input a numerical value, so if you're off your center mark, you can always just hit zero and press enter and it returns you back to the default color. You can change the saturation or how much of that color is actually present. So you can have it sort of like, uh, as you can see it changing dynamically over here, it's looking a lot more brown and a lot more filled in than these faded brown chairs over here. Or I can change the saturation all the way down and gray out the color entirely. This is particularly useful if you're placing columns and support beams in underground settings, because then you can plunk a column down and then just gray it out and then turn it into more of a stone column as opposed to something that's a little bit more uh, colored stone. So we'll just hit zero, brings it back to center, hit enter just to make sure the change stays. Then you can also change its luminosity or how bright it is. So if you have it all the way set up to 100, it is definitely a lot brighter than this asset over here. And I can also change the luminosity down to negative 100, and then it just creates a black object as well. You can also change the alpha of it, or the transparency. So what this will allow you to do is if you want to have an object that's barely visible, uh, let's say you have a, an object that is uh, obscure or hidden by an illusion, uh, this is a great way to put those assets down and then have them just barely visible so that you know as the GM which assets are actually in the physical world and which ones might be a little bit more ethereal or hidden by some sort of magic effect. You can also make it completely invisible and then return it back to completely opaque and visible once again. So as you can see, I'm just changing the color and it's still maintaining some form of the original color, but just changing the hue or the, the surface layer of that asset color. But if I were to t enable the colorization, now I'm changing everything, the entire asset. So you'll want to be careful about how you're wanting to change the color. If you're looking to just change it ever so slightly, or if you want to recolor every layer on an asset. So. I usually leave that disabled unless for some particular reason I actually need to use it. But generally, I change just the surface hue, saturation, and luminosity, as opposed to changing the entire color like that. But this is where you would go to change those asset colors right down here. The next thing I want to focus on 
is how you can actually change where these assets line up. So if you look over here on this particular asset group, remember how in our initial video on assets, I had all these placed above the walls? Well, this actually changes how they interact with the level. If you notice, when I put down any other new assets, they're going to sit underneath these chairs and tables. So remember, my chandelier is not above the walls, but all these chairs and the table are. So if I were to put a new asset underneath, it suddenly sits underneath all of these objects that are now listed as above the wall. So what I actually want to do is I want to change how these things are represented on the level itself. Let me show you how we're going to do that. We're going to move these all back down. We're going to disable the above walls feature on all the assets, bringing back our lovely carpet that was in the previous video. So you notice now I've got a carpet sitting above a table, and I need to get rid of that. When you select the Levels and Layers icon, it brings you into this tab. You'll want to click the stage to show you everything that's on this uh, level exactly. So it's going to show you all the content, every single asset listed. Or if you click back on stage, you can go to Rooms to dial down a little bit deeper. So I actually want to go to the Tap Room that I've named it. So you can see up here, I've just named it Tap Room. This works the same way as if you're changing the name of an asset. Remember how I changed our dining room table over here? Well, you can actually name your rooms as well. And then we want to go to Content. So this is going to tell us everything that's in this room. So when you're hovering over each asset, what's going to happen is it's going to highlight it for you where that is on the map so you know exactly what it is you're looking for. So I want to put this carpet underneath all of these tables and chairs, and currently it is sitting above all the wooden chairs. So if I tag this, you'll see the crosshairs pop up here. If I press and hold, I can then begin to move where this asset sits. So all I want to do is make sure that it sits beneath all the wooden chairs and wooden tables. And seeing as that's near the bottom... And you can see it automatically jumps underneath that table as long as I have it put underneath where the table is located. Here you can change the names as well. If you want to highlight a specific asset, you can change this to dining room table as well, if you feel like it. You can also press this eye icon here to hide it or to reveal it. You can also lock it. So let's say I wanted to go back to my wooden table again, the one that's locked. I can select it. But you see I tried to move it and it automatically switched to the asset underneath that table so I can move that. But that's easy. You can disable that and then you can start moving it around again. I'm just going to control Z so I put it back where it belongs. And yes, I said Z. I'm Canadian. I'm sorry. Ah, see? Canadian! I apologized. If you remember in my previous video, assets work on a layered system. So you're basically building from the bottom up. Well, that's exactly how you would read this tab as well. You're starting from the bottom tab as your first layer on this map, and then you're just building and placing assets on top. But really, if you have any questions, uh, be sure to comment on that in these videos and let me know, and I can reach out to you directly to give you a little bit more of a deeper explanation. The next thing I want to show you is asset groups. Now this is going to really save you a lot of time when you're putting maps together. This is done again through the Layers and Levels tab, so we're going to click that again. I want to go to its content, and you'll happen to notice that I have a little folder here. And in this folder, it contains all of the assets that I have placed in here to create an asset group. So how do you do that? Well, what you want to do is we'll go to a room that I have not done anything in yet. Let's come down here, let's say. And we're going to create a new group. All right, so we're going to hit Create Group. We're going to name this group the Master Bedroom. Now, I'm going to hover over all the assets that I want in that room. 
So the bottle with the candle, which is sitting on the table, I'm going to drag and drop it into the folder, like so. I want that wooden chair, so it's dropped in. I want the studying desk, so that's dropped in. I want the closed chest. I want the bookshelf. I want the lit torch. I want the king size bed. So now, if I click on this folder, it's now going to show me and highlight all of the assets that are now linked to that group, which is perfect. That's what I want. This is going to make things a lot easier if I want to either recreate this exact layout in another room, or if I just want to group everything together for the purposes of editing specific areas. If you notice here, this is actually one giant room with a few dividing walls. But these particular rooms with these guest layouts here actually aren't divided into a separate room because I actually didn't fully draw out rooms when I made them. So Dungeon Fog is treating this entire wall that I've created or this entire room that I've created as a single room. So what I actually want to do is rather than having to dig through assets upon assets, what I actually want to do is just create a, a grouping so that I can then go and edit those specific assets quickly. Rather than having to dig through an entire list, I create a sub list and put those content pieces in there. So we're going to do that again just to show you one more time. We're going to create a new group and we're going to call this one guest room. And now I'm just going to hover over the assets that are in there. So I want the list torch in there. I want the empty shelf. I want the closed chest. And again, you can see it's very, very subtle, but you can see that it is highlighting the assets that I'm uh, hovering over. It's highlighting them on the map itself. And then I'm just going to drop it into that room like that. So when I click on this room group, it's now going to highlight all of the assets that are now part of that group. And this is great too, because if you accidentally miss one, you can always go back onto your content, find that particular object that you missed, and then add it to the group. So what we have now is one large room divided into three separate rooms with unmarked wall divisions with appropriate room groupings and again whenever you hover over one of these room groups it's going to show you where those assets are and then when you select that group it's going to highlight them all. Well you can even take editing a group one step further. If you notice now that I'm highlighted on an asset group I can then flip it horizontally like so. I can flip it vertically like so. Or I can do something even easier and I can duplicate this. So I can actually choose to press control D to bring up my duplication tool that I explained in the previous video and that then creates a duplicate of all those assets in the exact same relation and it gives you a ghosted image over here. So then I can place this exact same room layout anywhere I want on my level, which is fantastic. It makes building repeat rooms and asset configurations and layouts very easy and very quick. What this also does, what Dungeon Fog also does, is it maintains any coloring, any uh, scaling, any orientation or degrees that of any asset that you're duplicating. So just as in the previous video, if you wanted to, to select a single asset and duplicate it, now you can do a whole asset group, meaning that you can then make plunking rooms down a lot faster. So I can just control duplicate again. Now these aren't going specifically in rooms, but this is just to show you how fast it is to recreate the same layout over and over again. And then if I select this asset group, I can then choose to change them individually, 
because it's placing new assets down. If you wanted to group all these together, you would have to create a new group and then put all these assets into that group. But we'll just control Z to get rid of it. We'll control Z to get rid of that one. And we'll control Z to undo that one as well. So off they go. If you do have any questions, please let me know in the comment section below and I will get back to you as soon as I possibly can. Thank you very much for watching everyone and I will see you in the next video. Thank <laughs> you.